what's going on everybody? The networking guru here at Trepid Technologies and we're doing our last domain of our Network Plus full and free course. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm gonna get my face out of the way here and we're going over domain 5.5, given a scenario, use the appropriate tool or protocol to solve networking issues and we're gonna go over software tools in this video because we're gonna have a part two. Okay, so here's our objectives. So here's the last objective in the Network Plus ex uh, exam objectives. We're going over software tools. So we're going to get hit the command line. I'm going to definitely bring up our terminal. Uh, I'm going to also bring up a Kali Linux VM. I'll probably just do that right now. Open up VMware Fusion. And let's go over these different software tools and what they do. I'm going to try to do this in real time. Go over the slide. Do it in real time. And we're going to get some good learning, okay? I'm going to start this Kali Linux VM. Real quick, guys, because I want to show you some things on a, like, bash terminal on Linux. But let's head back to the slide. Okay. All right. So, protocol analyzer. So, one of the protocol analyzers we're going to talk about here is Wireshark. As you can see here, that's how we can do packet captures and actually look at data coming across uh, individually uh, on, a, on a link, right? So, this could be a WAN connection. This could be a LAN connection but it helps capture and analyze network traffic. We have other things like NetFlow, where we can export network information and then put it in a dashboard that may be unique to a vendor, like what you see on the screen here on my Ubiquiti router, my Dream Machine Pro. So if we use something like Wireshark, you can see here, uh, continue without saving. This is what we can do, right? And if I wanna filter this out, let's say I wanna look at like DNS traffic. I can start filtering things out like that. I can see where my DNS is destined to here. I can go through and it kind of looks at it like in an OSI model. So it's going to show us that Ethernet frame where our, we have our source and destination. We have our internet protocols is now going into layer three. We have our layer four information where we have our UDP packet source port DNS, right? Destination port 10446. The source IP is, this is a response, a DNS response, it looks like, from my default gateway, because my DNS here is just our ISP. And then we actually have the DNS response. So what were we looking for, right? So we have our standard query. Where is this, right, our answers? Here's the type A right there. So we were looking for this host record, this google.com, signaler-pa.client-s6.google.com. Now if I go, let's just... Let's see here. I'm going to go to, yeah, our Confluence page. And I come back down here to Wireshark. Let's see if that DNS request happened. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, because it may already have, like, that cached, right? It's okay if it doesn't. That's fine. I was just saying, oh, maybe we'll see it in real time. But that's how we can monitor traffic on Wireshark. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to log into my Ubiquiti router. I'm going to show you that dashboard as well, show you another way to monitor network traffic. Now, without showing too much and <laughs> letting people like hack my network, this is just a nice networking dashboard, right? Where I can look at old network health, I can look at Wi-Fi health, right? And this is just the standard Ubiquiti dashboard here, right? I can look at things going on in my router, and I'm going to have to block that IP address. That, <laughs> uh, I hate doing that at editing. Didn't want to do that. But look, we can see if there's high latency here, too. Um... And this just happens all the time on my router. But it's something, that, don't worry about that. It's a little bit too sensitive, right? But we can see, you know, a lot of things from this network monitoring and analysis here. We can look at our actual unified devices here. I could go to like this network camera and look at insights here as well. Now back to the slides here. Command line tools. So the ping, okay, the ping command. So the ping command is going to test the connectivity between two devices on a network by sending ICMP packets and measuring the response times. Guys, ICMP, ping. This is how we know if something's up or not, okay? When you go on your terminal, you just type in ping, and then you're there, right? Can I reach it? Can I not? Am I getting a good response, okay? Trace route. So trace route's actually going to be unique. With trace route, we're still going to use the ICMP protocol, but now we're going to look at every network hop along the way and if we can't reach something like we ping a destination ip we can't reach it the next utility we could use is something like trace route see well i can't reach this destination so let me just see where it's getting stopped at where am i getting hung up at right 
And if we see the last hop that responds to us, then we're like, oh, that's the ISP router. The ISP is blocking this. Then we can call our distant end, our ISP, and get cook it. So let me bring up a terminal here. Okay. Let me get this nice and zoomed in for us. And I'm on a MacBook, so I just want this terminal to look good so you guys can see it well in the YouTube video. Okay. Zoom in a little bit. We'll hit that clear command. Mac is very similar to Linux, okay? So let's say we want to ping. We can ping via IP address. We could also ping via host name. Now, if we want a trace route, so here it's going to be trace route. We can also do that to a host name. Now, in this, it's actually trace route, right? But in Windows, it's trace RT, okay? Sometimes this also happens, even though it can reach, sometimes like, I don't know if, what's going on in the ISP, if it blocks it or something, but it just won't show some of these hops, right? And that's okay. I'm going to hit control C because that's just want to show you how trace route works. Okay, back to our slides here. NS lookup. So NX lookup is a command line tool that queries DNS to obtain domain name information. We're going to show you that in the terminal as well. They have TCP dump. So something about packet captures, right? Wireshark is a software application that does packet capture for us. If we want, and then it saves the file into what's called a PCAP, a dot PCAP. And then if I were to send that packet capture, I do a packet capture. I export that .pcap file and I send it to some uh, higher level, right? The network architect. That's a typical way that we can kind of communicate. No, this is not going through. I did my packet capture. Well, sometimes we don't have Wireshark. Sometimes we're on a Linux server and we have to still get that packet capture put in a .pcap file where then we can open it in Wireshark and do further analysis. TCP dump is that command. TCP dump is the command line utility. It does the same thing as Wireshark, just from the command line or your bash terminal rather than an actual application. So NSLOOKUP, let me bring up my terminal again. Okay, so we're at our terminal. If I want to do an NSLOOKUP, I just want to zoom this in a little bit more. Let's clear this screen. If I want to NSLOOKUP an IP address, so 9.9.9.9, I can do that, right? I can look up that IP address. I can do... 8.8.8.8. .8 but if I can also do NS lookup to show that name resolution for an actual website, so trepatech.com. And then after I do the reverse, NS lookup 172.67.196.212. Right? Sometimes it'll show you the reverse, sometimes it cannot, right? It's kind of, you know, a little protection there. But let's try. Did I type it in right? Okay. But that's what NSLOOKUP does, okay, guys? It does no domain name resolution. And there's other switches we can put in there as well for NSLOOKUP that we don't need to get into uh, right now. Okay, now let's go back to our slides. Okay, the dig command. So dig is another DNS diagnostic tool used to query domain name servers or return information about DNS records. I like to call this more complex, right? If we're looking at like some MS records, or maybe we have a text record that we want to look at from like the terminal, we can use a dig command, okay? It can be way more specific in the request you want to do. Then we have the netstat command. So netstat is a utility that displays information about active network connections. And there's going to be a lot of different switches we can use in the netstat command. For this, I'm going to bring up our Kali Linux VM. Okay, so we're on our Kali Linux VM. You see I opened up Firefox. So if we type in just netstat, it's going to give us so much. I mean, it's just too much, right? How are we going to parse through all this information if I just want to see some established TCP connections, not these like internal sockets, right, that we're using? Well, we have to add what's called some switches. So let me hit clear. So my favorite switch is the dash ANTP, which is going to show me the established connections. So these are my established connections. I'm on Firefox and it shows me the program name. Um, it also shows me the PID, okay? Sometimes we'll have to do a little pseudo action too sudo to get like the full information but uh you see some extra things there to get the process id okay and if i want to kill this 
So if I'm looking for a TCP connection to kill, I can use the kill command with the process ID, run that netstat again command, and it's no longer there. You can see Firefox isn't open anymore. Okay, IP, IF config, or IP config. So this is a tool that'll show you the IP address information for your local workstation. So IP config is for Windows, IF config is for Linux and MacBook, and then the IP command, IP A, is kind of the new utility that will that Linux uses, right? The new Linux kernel uses the IP, the new Linux distros uses the IP command rather than the IF command. So I'm gonna show you this on my MacBook and the Kai Linux machine. ARP. Address Resolution Protocol. I believe we talked about this, hopefully, in a Network Plus uh, course. But this maps Layer 3 to Layer 2. So every device has an ARP table, right? That's how we know the Layer 2 information of our default gateway when we want to talk to anything outside our local area network, right? So we can use the ARP-A command to look at our local ARP cache or ARP table. And a uh, Cisco device, network device, maybe a little different. Maybe show IP ARP or show ARP, okay? So let's go ahead and run these commands real time. On the MacBook here, we're gonna type in ifconfig and look at all this uh, craziness it gives me, all the different like network ports on there. I just wanna see what my IP is to access the internet. So what I can do here on my MacBook is do ifconfig en0 and we can actually see my IP address, my net mask in <laughs> um, not just a regular slash notation, which is nice. Um, I know how to decipher this, you know, it's a slash 24, but we don't need to get into that right now. Okay, and then we have our broadcast address, okay? Notice on here, it doesn't show us our default gateway like Windows command would do with IP config. And then if we go to our Kali machine, if we try to type in IF config, that works, but the new one is IPA. IPA is the one you wanna use, and some Linux distributions, IF config won't work. You'd have to download like, a net tools package or something like that. But here we can see, again, it gives us our IP address, the broadcast, okay? And that's how we do it on Kali Linux. And then we have the ARP command. So let's go ahead and look at our ARP command. We can just do this, ARP-A on our MacBook, and it's gonna show us all of our uh, layer three to layer two mappings. So we come down here, Oops, ARP dash A. Yeah, let's hit it again. I just want to show you one more time. We can look at all of our layer three mappings here. Okay. So when we want to talk to these IP addresses, it shows us the MAC address. Okay. So pretty cool uh, that we can look at our ARP tables. And from a troubleshooting perspective, we could do this from a router too to like look at what IP addresses are assigned to where, what MAC addresses. But okay, let's go back to our slides. And map. So Nmap is another tool that we can use on the CLI where we have an application that allows us to scan a subnet and look at the open ports and protocols. We can look at vulnerable things. We can see what mattresses are on there. We can look at what kind of devices we have on our network through the Nmap utility. So scanning a network for live hosts, identifying open ports and services. So I'm gonna show you the application called Zenmap. Okay, so we have our Zenmap tool here. And what I did here is just come up here to the target. So this is where we put the subnet we want to scan. And then we have our different scanning options here. So let me get my face out of the way. And these different scanning options, you know, intense scan, intense scan, all TCP ports would be kind of crazy. Uh, quick scan is what I did. And this just shows us real quickly just the open ports, right? I hope that's not too hard to see. I, I want to try to zoom in here. It's okay. But we can see the MAC addresses, the open ports on some of these devices, and the IP addresses. So that was the ZenMap application, right? That's uh, something we can, like a desktop application. But this can also be done at the CLI as well. Okay, some other software tools. So this is going to be done on uh, network devices, typically. They're both discovery protocols. That's going to be sent over a layer 2. It's going to be a layer 2 protocol. And they're gonna do network discovery and mapping between network devices and really anything that talks this protocol, okay? So the link layer discovery protocol is a vendor neutral protocol used to advertise device identity and capabilities to a neighbor. This could be like your native VLAN, uh, how much PoE you have, what kind of chassis you are, your MAC address, what your management IP is, 
CDP does the same thing, except it's a Cisco proprietary protocol. So what's nice about this, if I'm on a Cisco switch, I can use this command to discover Cisco IP phones, Cisco VTC machines, anything Cisco, right? So you can see here a common command that's used in a lot of troubleshooting and neighbor discovery, especially if we're looking at things from a CLI. It'll be show LLDP or CDP, it's the same command in Cisco, neighbors, the interface, and then details. And this is gonna show us everything coming across in that CDP and LLDP packet, okay, or frame. The local interface, the chassis ID, which is the MAC address, the port description, the iOS, right? The management IP, so a lot of good information here. Um, we can enable this or disable this. Some switch platforms will have both enabled, some will have none enabled. Just depends on what vendor you're working with. And obviously CDP is Cisco proprietary. Then the last thing we're gonna talk about in this video is a speed tester. Something so easy, guys. It just tests your net speed. It tests what your bandwidth is, okay? Now, let's go do our quiz. All right, so we're at our academy here, our custom learning management software. If you buy our self-paced or live virtual training courses, you get access to all these features in our LMS and in mobile application. So it is awesome way to get certified. We're gonna go to our quizzes here and we're going over domain 5.5.1 quiz. All right, so let me zoom in here. Let me get my face in view because I know it really helps you guys when it comes to answering these questions and it helps my social media. Okay, so question one of domain 5.5.1. Which of the following tools is specifically designed to scan a network for live hosts, open ports, and services? A network, to scan a network. So we're gonna go with Nmap. The network mapping tool, right? So there's the explanation. All of our questions come with a deep explanation like this. You can pause the video if you'd like to read. Question two, which tool is best for capturing and analyzing real-time network packets on a Linux system? It's gonna be TCP dump, right? That's gonna actually do a packet capture much like Wireshark would do. Save it to a PCAP for further uh, monitoring and analysis. Pause the video for explanation. Question three, a network administrator needs to investigate the path packets take from a source to destination, including each hop along the route. It's, it's trace route. I don't need to finish. Which command should they use? That's trace route, right, guys? Trace route uses that TTL, the time to live, the, and the ping packets to tell us every hop along the way from source to destination. Trace route C. I got that wrong. That'd be crazy. All right, pause the video if you'd like to read the explanation. Question four: What command line tool would you use to check the DNS records for a particular domain name? And it's lookup, right? That's how we do uh, DNS queries from the command line. So NS lookup. Question five. What command would you use to determine if a specific remote host is reachable on a network to measure the round trip time of the packets? Round trip time, specific route host is reachable. I'm gonna go with ping, right? A little tricky there of trace route, but that shows us every hop. With ping, that will show us the, you know, the latency, the round trip time, which for gamers, you know this, you know this. <laughs> so pause the video if you'd like to read the explanation. Question six, if a network administrator wants to view the IP address and MAC address, layer three to layer two mapping on a local device, which command should they use? That's the ARP command, an ARP A for Mac and Linux. Pause the video if you'd like to read the explanation. Let's view our results, let's go. We have 100%. And I'd like to thank everyone for viewing. Like, subscribe, share if you're friends. If you want access to our learning management system, click that link in the description below. All active duty National Guard Reserve soldiers get our training for free with voucher and a bunch of extra features. Just reach out to us. Thank you for viewing, and I'll see you in our last video of the Network Plus course.